Thank you, Reverend Ma. Our worship theme this morning is Welcome to the Interim. Such simple words, Welcome to the Interim. But are they a blessing or a curse? The interim is a time and space for transition. As I think about transition, I recall what inspired Linda and me when we first began attending services in the cute and cozy little church on Evans Street in Moorhead City. It was just a few years ago. We love the friendly people who welcomed us into their intimate community, engaging us during coffee hours and in uh, small group meetings. Certainly, UCF was a pastoral fellowship, yet also one that was living Unitarian Universalist principles to an extent that one might find in a larger congregation. UCF members clearly embraced the second UU principle, working hard for justice and equity throughout the Crystal Coast and beyond. Linda and I were soon part of a vigorous anti-racism reading group, illustrating the free and responsible search for truth and meaning that is the fourth and keystone of our UU principles. Then, quite suddenly, all was interim. UCF found itself thrust into a world nearly paralyzed by a global pandemic. We closed the doors at Evans Street, little knowing that we would never worship there again. The sanctuary we had purchased on Bridges Street, right here, <laughs> could not be salvaged. And we embarked on a major capital construction project that nobody had imagined. With the looming retirement of our beloved settled minister, we were thrust into a search that led to our hiring Reverend Ma as our interim minister. Together, we renovated and built an amazing new campus and then moved in, still riding wave after wave after wave of pandemic. Remarkably, we join in worship today to discuss the interim, that time and space for transition. Haven't we already interimed enough? <laughs> Perhaps we would love to be instead discussing a resumption of our cherished and comfortable old ways. Wouldn't that be nice? But such is not the case. During the interim, we have chosen instead to seize the day and to continue walking a new path. In the short year ahead, we will be called to fully embrace our past and we will all need to be able to tell that remarkable story. We will also be called to identify clearly who we are and what we want and what we don't want to be. Do you have ideas about this? How will we use our democratic process to arrive at some conclusions? That democratic process is embedded in our fifth principle. These conclusions will inevitably lead us into the process of calling our new settled minister. During the interim, we have also chosen to position ourselves more prominently in our community and to invite new members to join us. It's nice to see some prospective new members here today. Um, who will these new members be? And will we be comfortable with the inevitable changes they bring to our fellowship? This morning, we recognize the fact that not all in this audience are old members of UCF. Perhaps you are feeling a bit new yourself. If so, please be sure to seek answers to the questions you may have about our history, our principles, and the opportunities we see in the years ahead. During the interim, then, we are called to engage in further transition as a faith community. If we respond to this call with worry and regrets, we will not succeed. Let's not lose sight of our dreams. We wish to position UCF as a regional leader in liberal religious inquiry, 
reflecting our third principle, and a staunch supporter of justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, again, reflecting our second principle. We have a vision of a beautiful campus, and we have asked our Common Grounds Task Force to help us clarify that vision, which will honor our seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Vintage member or curious visitor, we welcome you to join us in this process with eyes wide open and with excitement for the wonderful things we are dreaming into existence, we will achieve our vision. Welcome to the interim. I close this reflection on the interim with a reading entitled, First Comes the Waiting by Erica Hewitt. It comes from the Touchstones renewal theme um, that came out in January of, of this year. So I'll close with that. This is the season of endings and beginnings when the small signs of dawn pierce through the night and something new is born. But first comes the waiting. First come the lessons of endings and beginnings, the presence of life, the sheltering spirit of love, grieves with those sweeping up the debris of loss, waits with those who restlessly reach out for change, grants us courage in the night to guard each other's dreams for this holy, wondrous universe. Grant us, O oh universe, unfolding in mystery, a sense of your timing. May we loosen our grip on that which doesn't serve us, leaving behind that which we have outworn and outgrown. Teach us the lessons of beginnings. Remind us that such waitings and endings may be a starting place, a planting of seeds, which bring to birth what is ready to be born, something right and just and different, a new song, a deeper relationship, a fuller love, in the fullness of time. Amen and blessed be. Thank you, Tom, for sharing some of what you love about the Unitarian Coastal Fellowship with us. There's also some of the things that I love about UCF, that intimacy, that friendliness, the determination to live out Unitarian Universalist values. So, as Tom said, welcome to the interim. And those of us who were around all last year may be thinking, what do you mean welcome to? We've been in an interim period all along. And that's true. The last few years have been a time of a lot of transition with the pandemic and waiting for construction to finish and moving into a new building and the former minister retiring and a new minister, that's me, coming in. It seems like we should be talking about settling in. You know, for a lot of last year, I was using this metaphor of a plane circling and circling and circling and waiting to be cleared to land. And oh my gosh, I hope we don't run out of fuel. And finally, we were cleared to land. We have landed. And in some ways, we, we are settling in. We're learning our way around a new kitchen and we've learned our way around this new sound system. And um, a lot of folks, I think, have maybe settled on where their usual seat is going to be amongst all these beautiful new chairs and someday we're going to get coffee hour started back up we're working on it we haven't forgotten and you don't have a new settled minister i am not your settled minister i am your interim minister and i have a very particular role to play and i brought a prop to help demonstrate that so give me a minute Prop came to me, thank you. So this is a walking stick. For the duration of my interim ministry, as long as I am here, I am going to leave this stick up on the chancel to remind you that I am a traveling minister. I am not permanent. 
one of these days, I'm going to take my stick and I'm a go. And it's not because I don't love you. I do love you very much. It's because I have a job to do. Because when a minister retires, especially a longtime minister, such as the blessed Reverend Sally White, I made it sound like she was dead, she's not, um, who was here for 18 years, that's a long time. 18 years is a long time. And after something like that, it's a good idea to bring in someone like me, an interim minister, to kind of put some space between the old and the new because there wasn't anything wrong with the way Reverend Sally did things. I mean, from what I can tell, she was a great minister, did a lot of great work here, helped grow a really healthy and welcoming congregation. And this is a different congregation now than the one that called Reverend Sally back in, I guess it must have been 2002. This county is different from what it was in 2002. I know some of y'all have been around here for a long time and can attest to that, right? That things have changed a lot around here, yeah. I mean, and the world isn't what it was in 2002, right? If you think back to 2002, I mean, YouTube wasn't around, you know, social media wasn't around, the internet was kind of still in its infancy. So this is a different congregation in a different county in a different world. And that calls for a different kind of minister. And if you're going to call a new minister, there are certain things you need to do. So I'm going to use myself as an example here. I am, as many of you know, undergoing a transition of my own, a gender transition. So when I went away in July, I spent a lot of time doing inward reflection, thinking about what direction I wanted to go. I needed to think about things like my hair, my personal appearance. What kind of clothes do I want to wear? What do I want to change my name to? Do I want to change my name? What pronouns do I want to use? So I went and experimented with my hair and my clothes and my pronouns and my name. And also my voice got a lot deeper or it feels that way to me. I don't know if it sounds that way to you. And I eventually settled on the name Micah Chien Yi Ma. I chose Micah for a number of reasons. One, I wanted to be able to keep my initials. I like the, the matchy matchy initials, you know? And also more importantly, I mean, if we gotta be real, it's in a lot of my online usernames. My username in our, Breach, in our Breeze Church Management database is MMA. So let's just keep it simple, keep my initials, right? And I considered names that were similar to my old name, like Mitchell and Michael, but Mitchell is, I mean, honestly, kind of a white guy name. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not a white guy. So I kind of felt like that wasn't going to work. And I thought Michael was kind of I mean, I, I know a lot of Michaels, like I'm already friends with like four Michaels. So as long as I'm choosing my own name, you know, I can, I can choose something that's a little more unique for myself. But I also wanted it to be something my family, a lot of whom are not native English speakers, something that they could remember and pronounce. So eventually I came up with the name Micah which also pleases me because it's a name that I feel reflects me as a religious professional. I have a very, very soft spot for uh, Micah chapter six, verse eight, which reads, he has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? I love that verse. And I really liked the idea of being able to keep that verse close to me in my name, to have my very own name remind me to do justice, love kindness, stay humble, and stay connected to the divine. It's better than getting a tattoo. <laughs> so for me, Micah ticked all the boxes, allows me to keep my initials, isn't too common, easy for my non-English speaking family members to remember and pronounce. Bonus has a religious meaning. Okay, but what about the, the middle name, the, the Qian Yi? You know, if you look at the order of service, you may notice there's a very prominent C in the middle, right? You know, Michael, Micah, C, Ma. Well, 
as I was doing all this reflection and thinking about my name, I decided that, you know, my name, I want it to represent all of me, right? Like all the different things that make up me. And that includes my Chinese background and heritage. So my Chinese name is Qian Yi, and my full name is now Micah Qian Yi Ma. So that's all the thought that went into my new name. And that's sort of the process that this congregation is going to undergo too in the next year or so. As you start thinking about the minister that you're going to call to occupy this beautiful new sanctuary, what is important to you? What are all the things that make you, you? Who do you want to call to be your representative in this world? These are important questions. So it's important to take your time and consider them seriously. I took way longer than the month of July to think about my name, just to be clear. And I can't help you answer these questions any more than you could have answered questions that I had about myself, right? because this is your congregation. So these questions, who are we, where are we going, who do we want to lead us there? That's, that's what you're going to be working on. And while you're working on those questions, I'll be attending to the administration of the church, making sure that all the systems are working and going and that when your new minister gets here, they can just jump in without having to worry about things like, wait, who updates the church website? And of course, I'll be doing all the regular ministerial functions as well, like doing pastoral care, leading worship on Sunday mornings, teaching classes, you know, working on scheduling. And, and I'll be talking about what's great about Unitarian Universalism and what is great about this church. And now I know some of you are new here. This is your second or your first visit. And so maybe you're sitting, sitting there like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? What have I signed myself up for? Get me out of here. But I assure you, an interim period is a great time to get involved with a church because that's when a church is really alive. That's when a church is trying new things, reinventing themselves, and newcomers have a really special role to play in a time like that, which is just being around, showing up, and telling people what you see and what you're experiencing. People who have been part of an organization for a long, long time don't, I mean, you're too deep in the weeds. It's hard to have perspective anymore, right? But a new person such as myself, although now that I've been here for an entire year, it's hard to call myself that new of a person anymore. Nonetheless, a new person can come along and go, oh, have you tried this before? Or, oh, why don't we do things this way? Can, can we try something else? or offer insight that we might be missing, or show up and say, oh, there's this cool new technology that we could be using, or, hey, there's this music I really like. Could we try playing that on Sunday morning? Because this is the time to experiment. It's just that instead of experimenting with you know, hair and clothes and pronouns or what have you, we're going to experiment with programs and ways of doing things and decor and anything else we can think of. I am really excited about the coming year. I am excited about all the activities that we're going to do and the deep conversations that we're going to have about what we value. I'm excited to talk about mission and vision. I'm excited to try new things. And yeah, it will be tough sometimes because change is hard and scary and there's already been so much change and we are all really, really tired of change and would like something to not change for once. And during some of these deep conversations, we may find out things that we don't like about each other or ourselves. And I also know that whatever happens, we can get through it because this church has already been through so much recessions and Hurricane Florence and the pandemic and I don't even know what else. And I want to remind you that this is the church where I chose to start transitioning because I knew that this church would love that because this is a healthy, affirming church that knows how to stand up for you, you principles. So you can be proud of that. I know that I am. May it be so. 
And so I was just talking about how everything happens so much all the time. And so I like to include in every service a little time that could just be for you. A few minutes where you can sit in silence, you can meditate if you want, you can focus on your breathing, you can think about what you're going to have for lunch, you could quietly work on your shopping list. A little bit of time for you, because it's hard during the week to find a few minutes just for us, right? A few minutes just for me to sit and be. So the next few minutes are for you.